Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Proud member of the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. Playing a little House of Pain bumper music there. If you're watching on the uh, webcam, you can see Tori jumping around. <laughs> All right. Getting. But I will not jump for joy. He will not jump for joy, for those of you who watch that. What was that show? Oh, my name is Earl. My name is Earl. His name is Tori. That's what we need. A My Name is Tori show. Yeah, no. <laughs> We'll just have a camera follow you around. So That would be entertainment. I'll tell you what, yes. That would be entertainment, but I wouldn't want it. Well, it would be kind of boring because, you know, part of the time they'd be they'd just be sitting out in the visiting area of the jail, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've kept myself out of trouble. Yes, you have. You're For the most part. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this segment I want to talk about. Our state senator, or a state senator from Tennessee, Stacy Campfield. I know immediately I'm going to have people jamming the phone lines here at the station, but you can hear me out on this first. This story ran in a in the national newspaper, and of course it was picked up everywhere else too. And it starts out a nasty email that state senator Stacy Campfield fired off to several critics has drawn yet another round of notoriety for the Knoxville Republican. The firebrand lawmaker told at least three people who wrote his office that they should, quote, consider therapy and medication after they expressed opposition to legislation he has filed this session. And one of these people was named in the, or actually two of them were named in the article. One was Talisha Cobb. She's a Berry Hill woman who used to live in Knoxville in the area Campfield now represents. She wrote the lawmaker to express her displeasure with his Classroom Protection Act, which would discourage classroom discussions of homosexuality. Well, that kind of ties in with the first segment. <laughs> and his proposal to tie welfare benefits to children's performance in school. Now, here is part of what she had written. Quote, you are an embarrassment to our great state. Folks all over the country and here in Tennessee are looking at the bills you are proposing in shock. They are the most ignorant and morally lacking legislation that could be proposed this year. It is clear that you are targeting homosexuals and low-income families with hogwash legislation. You need to search your heart, your values, and your Christianity to find a better way to represent us as a whole. Now, first off, Talisha, don't bring Christianity into a discussion about the government giving money to people as charity. Christianity argues against this blatantly unchristian act because it's theft, plain and simple. Taking money from one taxpayer at the point of a gun and giving it to another is theft. These people who sit out here and argue they're doing, quote, the Lord's work by having the government give money to the poor better understand they are badly mistaken. What happened to all the liberals yelling about separation of church and state? Even though it's not the, in the Constitution, that church and state isn't, they scream every time anything remotely Christian is done by government. Now, if you're arguing this is the Lord's work, then that should tell you the government shouldn't be doing it now, shouldn't it? If that's, we want to be consistent, that is, which most liberals and conservatives, too, aren't. But back to the story, Senator Canfield sent this in reply to Talisha's email. Quote, you seem to be, you seem to have some serious deep anger issues. Have you ever thought about therapy? <laughs> I hear they are doing some wonderful things with medications these days. Jacob Wilson, he, another person who had, had sent him a letter, he's a 21-year-old college student. He had received a similar reply from Senator Camfield. Said his email to the senator had been harsh but not angry. When he was asked about this, Mr. Wilson said, as a politician, you should be prepared to handle things like this. You should be professional every day. Well, Mr. Wilson, you are 21 and in college. Should you not also be professional as well? You are, after all, an adult, correct? Why not start acting like one? 
for too long we have been letting people get away with unacceptable behavior. People want to pass on their incivility. They want to be able to act however they want, yet demand you treat them with decorum and respect at all times, no matter how they act. And if you don't, they kick and scream like little babies. Witness these emails that were written to Senator Camfield. I don't care if you're for the legislation or not. I don't care if you write something mean and hateful. Just don't get all bent out of shape when that kind of treatment is returned. These two people sent these impolite and rude emails, and when they get something snarky in return, they cry and scream like little babies. Yes, Talisha Cobb, Jacob Wilson, I'm calling you a couple of immature children. Little whiny babies who want to act however they want, but demand everyone else treat them correctly. And don't give me this, but Patrick, he's a legislature. He should be more professional. Baloney! These people who wrote these emails are adults, yet they are acting like spoiled children. And if someone doesn't treat them with the utmost respect, they go running to the newspapers and the media like the crybabies they are. Give me a break. Are you saying you should get a pass on your behavior while another adult doesn't? Just because he's a politician doesn't mean anything. You are just immature, and, and you want to be able to get away with yelling and screaming at people without getting it back. This is just classically what liberals do, and conservatives too. They want to yell and insult, but not get it in return. They can dish it out, but they can't take it, because again, they're, they're immature. You people just need to grow up, or at least grow a pair so you can take it if you're going to dish it out, but you know, I just don't think that's likely. I guess these two whiners don't abide by the whole treat others as you want to be treated rule. I guess they would rather obey the I want to act however I want, but you have to act like an adult rule that, you know, other immature people and children, the rule they follow. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And like I said, if you're for that legislation or not, I don't care. It's just if you're going to write impolite, rude letter, just be expecting to get one back. Anyway, moving on. Speaking of ridiculous. <laughs> yes? Yes. You're speaking of me? Yes. No, I'm speaking of our president. <laughs> oh, okay. Carry on. He gave an interview to the magazine, The New Republic, and during the question he was asked, I'm wondering if you as a fan take less pleasure in watching football, knowing the impact that the game takes on its players. Now, this interview was referring to studies that show how concussion injuries are starting to show effects later on in life for football players. Now, the president answered with this, I'm a big football fan, but I have to tell you, if I had a son, I'd have to think long and hard before I let him play football. What he's talking about is worrying about these people getting concussions. He also said, I tend to be more worried about college players and NFL players in the sense that NFL players have a union. They're grown men. They can make some of these decisions on their own. And he would also like to see the NCAA do something. By him saying that, it means either they can do something or the government will stick their nose into it. But that is not really my point here. My point I'd like to make is President Obama is so concerned about these kids in college who are adults, by the way. They're over 18. And being over 18, they can join the military. But if they do that, then Obama will send them overseas to possibly die in a country that cares nothing for us. Die in a country we should not be bothering with in the first place. But putting Americans' lives isn't in danger, isn't that's not enough for him. No, sir, he has to endanger and kill indigenous people in those other countries. Courtesy of our unmanned drones flying around over there killing not only the people they're aiming for, but ten or twenty others they happen to be the unfortunate enough to be in the area. I guess that's collateral damage. That's that's what they call those people who happen to be murdered in those attacks. Authorized by our president. I guess those people don't count. They're expendable. But let them put on a football helmet. And then all of a sudden, hey, now they count for something, at least to this president. He even puts our ambassadors, our diplomatic people, into countries that kind of guarantee their safety. These countries also won't allow us to bring in enough security to keep our people safe ourselves. They're in more danger there than running around a football field. At least on the field, they ain't shooting at you. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> but... If the president is so concerned about all that, then why not just pull these kids out of these countries where we have no business being in the first place? 
we're putting them in much more danger there than they'll ever be running up and down the football field. But that doesn't really fit with the scenario, the story that he's putting forth. That's priorities. It is priorities. That's priorities. The priorities are to teach that other country a lesson. <laughs> and I've covered that on this show. If you want to go back and check that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Reagan show, you'll get plenty of opportunities to review my theories on all of that <laughs> and my analysis. Anyway, we're up on the half hour break already. This show just flies by when we come back. Oh, we'll talk about Chuck Hagel and how he accused America of being a boy. Well, it didn't actually accuse America of being a bully, but didn't not agree with it. This is the Patrick Reagan Show. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. 